welcome to our Bart worship for this, the first Sunday in Lent. Wednesday, of course, was Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. And if you haven't had an opportunity yet to pause at this start of Lent, then there is an Ash Wednesday recorded service on the BART website that I hope may be a help. Since early days, it has been the custom of the church to prepare for Jesus' passion, death and resurrection through this Lenten season of penitence and self-denial. So I invite you to share this Lent together. Please join our Zoom Lent course, God's Story, Our Story, starting this week on Tuesday at 12 noon and on Wednesday at 7.30 in the evening. The World Day of Prayer on the 5th of March falls in Lent and Churches Together in Morling is encouraging us all uh, to prayer walk our communities for the week from the 28th of February to the 5th of March. And maybe this is something you could simply take up on your daily walk or exercise uh, through our own villages. In a moment, we're going to join in our first hymn, Giving Thanks for God's Faithfulness. Children, if you haven't already found it, and if you have a second device to watch it on, then on the BART website, there is something new and very special for you. It's Bart Kids Church and it's going to be there for you online Sunday by Sunday. Our heartfelt thanks to Freya and Sarah for preparing Kids Church for you. And we thank God for their passion to share the gospel with our young people. Now at the start of our worship, a prayer for this, the first Sunday in Lent. Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew close to you in the desert. Help us to use these days of Lent to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
sings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, for in thy morning new verses I see. Let us admit to God the sin which always confronts us. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins, and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect in light, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day. submission all is at rest I am my savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story.
this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. A reading from Genesis. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. The baptism and testing of Jesus. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days being tempted by Satan. He was with wild animals, and angels attended him. Jesus announces the good news. After John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of the Lord. As I said at the beginning of this service, Kids Church comes in a separate video to this one. So if you haven't found it already, take a look on the BART website. This week it's called BART Kids Week One Temptation. But for now, here's a short clip from the video for all of us to share. I've got a challenge for Freya. She needs to eat one of these donuts that is covered in sugar without licking her lips. I don't think she'll do it. I think she'll be too tempted. Let's see how she does. Okay, so Sarah has challenged me to eat a donut without licking my lips. I think this is gonna be really easy. So here we go. We've got a nice jam donut, soft and fruity. And oh, they look so good. Here we go, here we go. Okay. Oh, maybe I don't want wet lips. Okay, here we go.
I lick my lips. Sorry, it's just too tempting. Have you ever heard of the word temptation? Do you know what it means? Being tempted means you want to do something you are not supposed to do. Now we just watched a video of Freya being tempted to lick her lips while eating a donut. Well, eating donuts is not necessarily wrong. But if I specifically told her not to lick her lips, then you, she should probably not be doing it, right? Sometimes it's tempting to disobey or to not listen well to our parents. What are some of the rules you have at home? Sometimes we have these rules and we are tempted to skip some of those rules or to do something other than what we should be doing. Maybe one of the rules doesn't sound fun and you'd like to be doing something else. And it can be hard to be obedient. In fact, on our own power, it can sometimes be impossible. But guess what? We don't have to obey everything perfectly on our own power. Jesus can take care of it and we can rely on his power. Did you know that Jesus faced temptation? It was in our gospel reading today that as a matter of fact, he went into the desert and for a long time, he didn't have anything to eat. Well, that made him pretty hungry and Satan picked that time to try and make him do things he knew he was not supposed to do. These were the things that might not have been bad if God instructed him to do it. But Jesus knew he couldn't listen to Satan for directions. Being tempted is not a sin, but giving in to temptation is. And Jesus did not give in. Now it can be hard to do the right thing, but we know that Jesus lived a perfect life and died for us so that we can live. Jesus faced temptation, so he knew he knows what it's like when we are having a tough time trying to obey. What do you think we can do when we are tempted to do the wrong thing? That's right, yes, we can pray to God for help and we can read our Bibles. We can also focus on positive things in our life. The best way to fight off a negative temptation is to focus on something wonderful instead. So we want to challenge you. So during Lent, which is the 40 days and 40 nights that Sarah was talking about, we want you to find a moment of joy each day and write it down. And this is a great time to thank God for those moments of joy. And now we are going to say a prayer together to thank God for all that he has given us. So dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to live a perfect life. Thank you that he can help us when we are tempted. Help us do the right thing to love, serve and obey you. And thank you for the love of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen! I saw some photos this week of some very muddy youngsters who uh, had been following the rainbow trail of coloured ribbons set by Sarah and Freya as a Covid secure half term outdoor challenge, uh, most especially for those who needed a break from online school. For Christians, of course, the rainbow reminds us of God's faithfulness. And we reflected just a couple of weeks back on the assurance of God's unchanging, constant character, his faithfulness. How often do I pause and find strength for the present in remembering God's past faithfulness? Not only his faithfulness to me personally, not only his faithfulness to others I know, but his faithfulness throughout history. In these trying times, God is still faithful, Christ is still sovereign, and his kingdom is still around us. 
Our Old Testament reading reminded us of God's ancient covenant, his binding promise, captured in the sign of the rainbow, his promise to all peoples of his steadfast love and faithfulness. And the whole Bible story is the outworking of that covenant love of God. It's a story that moves inexorably to the cross in a journey of cost and hope that we will follow over these Sundays in Lent. So here we are early in the 40 days of Lent, recalling as we heard in our Gospel reading, Jesus 40 days in the desert, in the wilderness, preparing for his mission. Those 40 days recall 40 years in the desert for God's people rescued from Egypt, being prepared by God to enter his promised land. And we have heard how just before his journey into the wilderness, Jesus went to John to be baptised in the Jordan River along with the crowds. And as he came up out of the water, a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And Jesus would soon hear again the same voice and words as we heard last week on the Mount of Transfiguration. Drawn together in Jesus' baptism, we see God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God, the Trinity, at work. The Father declares the Son's identity to him and the Holy Spirit descends on the Son, anointing and equipping him for mission. For Jesus at his baptism to hear those words of his Father's love and pleasure in him, to see and feel the Holy Spirit descending on him in power. What an affirmation, what an assurance, what confidence to take with him into what started in earnest that day. The battle. The battle lines were drawn in the desert. Mark sets up from the beginning the conflict that underpins all of Jesus' mission, why he came. On one side, Jesus, God the Son, sent into the wilderness, led, empowered by God the Holy Spirit, supported throughout by his Father's love, his Father who does indeed send angels to watch over him, lined up against Satan and the wild beasts. Jesus' whole mission is a supernatural conflict that will take him to the cross. And he can face that conflict assured and empowered by the relationship within the Trinity, the love of his Father and the power of the Spirit. And the amazing gift and privilege is that so can we face the conflict, the desert times. Assured of the love of God, he says to every follower of Jesus, You are my child whom I love. So can we face the conflict, the desert times, in the power of the Holy Spirit, who equips the people of God still today. We will all have our desert experiences. Bishop James, in a letter this week, said that as we begin the season of Lent this year, it may seem for some of us that we have already been journeying through a kind of Lent for a good many months. Dare we trust that God can use even these wilderness times, even the personal testing we are facing now, to equip us for his mission? I believe we are seeing that. We may think of the desert as a place of desolation and despair. But for the people of God in the desert, the wilderness was a place of hope, a place of new beginnings. 
It was in the desert that God made his people into a people after the exodus from Egypt. Now, as in the desert, Jesus confronts his mission. The stage is set for a new exodus, a new beginning, a new rescue, a new salvation. A journey of cost and hope, a journey to the kingdom. And so Mark tells us, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news. This one verse is Mark's key statement of Jesus' message. The good news, the gospel, the kingdom of God is come near. The reign of God is come near. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus sets out a new story. 2,000 years ago and still for us today, this is a new way to live life, a new way to experience life, a way to find our story in God's story. God's reign is not just about Sundays, but about living under his reign every day. God's reign is about seeing where he is at work, seeing where he is growing his kingdom and joining in. We're starting our Bart Lent study this week. It's about seeing God's story as something completely new that changes us, that changes the people we share it with, that changes everything. It's about seeing God's story as a story to tell of love. Join us this week as we seek to catch up with God who we will most often find is there before us when we get involved in his mission in telling the story of his love. I believe we are being further equipped for God's mission, even in these our present wilderness times. I believe we do see his kingdom growing now and we can join in. In a renewed care for our neighbour, the kingdom is near. In a reawakened concern to counter injustice and equality even in our own nation, the kingdom is near. In rebuilding community made fragile by social distancing, the kingdom is near. Join in community projects in our villages to share Easter hope in the coming weeks, where people share God's love, the kingdom is near. Sometimes the thought of us actually joining in God's mission is daunting. Sometimes we are uncertain or anxious about sharing the good news of God's kingdom. We have a joyful message of love to share, and yet sometimes we're afraid of rejection and convince ourselves that we're not equipped for battle. Sometimes the concerns of the world obscure our sight of the kingdom. If that's you, even sometimes, then come and join our Lent study starting this Tuesday at 12 noon and then Wednesday evening at 7.30. Check your email you may already have received the Zoom links from me. If you've missed them, let me know. Let's discover and share together what it means for each of us to be both a teller and a participant in God's story. May this Lent be an opportunity for each one of us to absorb afresh, to own personally for ourselves and to share joyfully the great sweep of the story of God's covenant, steadfast love. From the promise secured in the sign of the rainbow to the victory of Easter and the breaking in of the kingdom. Be assured, you are God's child whom he loves. God is still faithful. Christ is still sovereign. The kingdom is near. And nothing can stop the Lord Almighty. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. God 
God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, and he's fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Dear Lord, as we gather in our own houses for the first Sunday in Lent, let us not dwell on what we should give up, but what we should take up. Please fill us with your Spirit, so that we may give you praise and worship. We think of our brothers and sisters. You have given us all brothers and sisters, not those that we were born with, but those who surround us. And we give thanks for this blessing for the support we receive from them and ask you to show us how we can help those around us in need at this difficult time and we think now of a situation personal to us. Lord, we pray for peace that all those in power will seek peaceful ways to agree their differences and not resort to violence, so that peace will be brought to the whole world. And we pray for all those less fortunate than we, those who live in constant fear of violence and oppression. Let them know your peace and love, and we pause to think of a country close to our own heart. In our own parish we continue to pray for your loving will to be with all those who have lost loved ones. We give thanks for all who are working through the Covid pandemic to help make our lives safer. And we ask for your touch on all who are suffering hardship and let each pray quietly for someone now known only to us. We ask that you will be with us at all times, that we may make a difference in your world. May we reflect your peace and hope. Lord, we ask for your blessing on each one of us who may come today to worship you. And may this bring us all your peace and everlasting love, that through knowing you all will be brought to glory. Lord, please hear our prayers today as we ask them in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. i 
During Lent, we are saying no to the things we do not need. We are trusting in God and not ourselves. We are learning to trust God and not test him. Lord, help and protect us. Christ, give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and with those you love, now and always. Amen. <laughs>